I'm joined by Rick Avila, who has been on multiple times, no, no, no uh, stranger to uh, GDQ video. Uh, Rick, thanks for joining me. Glad to be back. Yeah. Could you introduce yourself a bit and about you know, what your role is or exactly uh, what kind of work you do? I'm a computer scientist. I've been pursuing AI since uh, mid 80s, and I've watched it evolve over the many years. And, and uh, I'm very involved in artificial intelligence for lung cancer screening. So you've talked with us before about the kind of calibration devices that GDQ has helped to fund. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how that project has been going? You gotta remember that most CT scanners are designed to measure all kinds of things. They're generally the what's considered to be the Swiss army knife of imaging. Um, uh, but they're not particularly well designed to measure out in the periphery where lung nodules tend to show up and lung cancers tend to show up. So we designed phantoms that can do that, that are ultra low cost, and you guys helped us deploy them around the world. And a phantom being basically like a, a small little test device that can help you calibrate a machine. Right, it's a calibration device, and we just wanna make sure that when we do imaging of somebody for lung cancer screening, that that scanner is operating at a reasonable level. You all helped fund us to put 40 of our first phantoms called CTLX-1s around the world. And then that was so successful that we also got some more funding to put a much larger, more involved phantom throughout Poland. And um, we've had just, just tremendous response from uh, c not just Poland, but countries around the world. You said you've been part of this workshop for you know 19 years since inception. What, give me a, a ballpark of kind of what a uh, processing time would have been like for a scan trying to, to identify nodules and stuff back at the beginning, or if there even was something, is such a possibility. So in around 2021, I was leading GE's AI. We're de we deployed a lung nodule AI, lung, lung nodule detection around the world for testing. It took about, I think it was around three minutes. And now we can do it in 20 seconds. So, and, and much, much better, higher performance, and with much more data. If I know you, you're, you've always got some prop or something to, to really show us. Uh, oh yeah. You, you had uh, something in mind, I believe, here as well. We've been sending out phantoms and calibration devices with small objects in it, like ellipsoids and other things, but that's not really the shape of a real lung cancer and especially a very early lung cancer. So lately what we've been doing is we've been using some of the latest 3D printers. So then we can take a patient's early lung cancer, let's say they found a lung cancer during screening when it was eight millimeters in diameter, and we can extract it out, uh, a model of it, and then we can print it. And like you see here, what we're doing is we're asking clinical sites all around the world to send us early lung cancers that are difficult to measure, and we're copying them. We're now sending them back out to the clinical sites and putting them in the phantoms and calibration devices I was telling you about, and we're asking them to image them and measure them. But this is now the first time we're using 3D printers to take early lung cancers. This is a very lucky person who had this lung cancer. It was removed at this size. This would exponentially grow at probably 180 day doubling time or, or faster, and it would kill the person within, within a year or two. So we're, we're able to take an image like this, turn it into a 3D print, and ship it around the world in, with hundreds of them sent to different locations around the world. And we're able to get data now that you, uh, we've never been able to get before. So it's, it's, uh, it's an exciting time. Well, thank you, Rick, so much for your time, and it's very valuable, and uh, we really appreciate you spending it with us. Thank you.